I've always been a student of military history and current events ever since I was a, a child. And when I w saw what happened in the media in Operation Desert Storm, how uh, reporters took liberties and did not take the time to do the proper research to tell stories, uh, I said to myself, somebody needs to do the, the research that is required to tell the stories of our young men and women at war uh, in the 21st century. So I set out to uh, research and dig out the details and tell these amazing stories of uh, our young men and women at war. Many years ago, my wife taught me that if I wanted information or wanted to get something done, I should start at the top. So in 2003, after the invasion, I wrote letters to all the commanding generals of the units that had been involved in the initial invasion in 2003. And only two generals responded. Uh, one was, at the time, Brigadier General Richard Natonsky, and uh, again, at the time, Major General David Petraeus. Petraeus offered to assist me in any way he could in telling the story of the 101st Airborne Division, and uh, General Natonsky went a step farther. He asked me to come to Camp Lejeune and talk with him and some of his Marines that were in the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Brigade. I spent an entire day at Camp Lejeune uh, speaking with General Natonsky, uh, now General Milstead, uh, uh, Colonel Royal Mortensen, uh, and a couple of other battalion commanders uh, that were involved in the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Brigade. And as I was leaving uh, Camp Lejeune on that long drive out through that, on that green road leaving the city, uh, leaving the, the base, I said to myself, I must tell this story. So General Natonsky started the ball rolling uh, by uh, giving me a brilliant interview and then introducing me to his uh, battalion commanders. Uh, the 1st Marine Regiment commander at the time was Colonel Ron Bailey. Uh, and I spoke with him as well. So the colonels and lieutenant colonels said, uh, you need to talk to our company commanders. And they introduced me to the company commanders. And then the company commanders, one of the questions that I always ask in every interview, and this may help you understand how I get the level of detail as well, is that I say to everybody I interview, whose story do I need to tell? And two things happen uh, when I ask that question. First, I get Marines telling stories of other Marines instead of talking about themselves, uh, which tends to be much more accurate and uh, also points out uh, the Marines that stood out in, in the operations. And then I get personal contact with those Marines as well, sailors and soldiers too, I, I must uh, include, because uh, both of these books are stories of... Uh, soldiers, sailors, and Marines, uh, primarily mar Marines, but many Navy corpsmen, and in both instances, there are Army units involved as well. So that's the personal interview. So with Marines in the Garden of Eden, I inter interviewed nearly 150 participants of the battle. In New Dawn, it was almost 200 participants of the battle. And in that top-down fashion, I got a, a glimpse from different views of the battlefield. A general's view of the battlefield is much different than a private's. Uh, so then when you put those all together in a book, you establish a level of detail that, uh, that I haven't seen in, in a lot of other works. Right. It provides many lessons uh, uh, that every Marine can uh, learn from. Uh, and the reason I say that is, and this is not unusual with the invasion of Iraq in 2003, but first contact in any war is chaotic at best. And uh, Nazaria is an excellent example how the Marines, everything went wrong that day for the Marines, and how they fought through it and still achieved their objectives. It's my benefactor, again, was General Natonsky. Uh, he had uh, led uh, the 1st Marine Division in the Second Battle of Fallujah, 
And in a conversation I was having with him in, uh, after he returned from Iraq, uh, I said, he said, you really need to write a book about Fallujah. And I said, well, that story's already been told. And he said, no, it hasn't. Uh, and I said, well, I'll, I'll take a look. And he gave me a briefing. And he, again, introduced me to uh, the regimental commanders and, and the battalion commanders. But in addition to that, and I, and I did this with Marines in the Garden of Eden as well, I find it very valuable to go through after action reports. And in Marines in the Garden of Eden, I went to the Marine Corps History Division and asked for all the after action reports from Nazaria, and I read through all of those. Uh, so when you couple the after action reports, which are written in this Marine syntax that is uh, designed to just get out the facts, uh, days and times and uh, uh, that sort of thing, uh, very dry reading. But if you combine that with the interviews, then you end up with a readable story that is even more accurate. And General Natonsky was uh, helpful in, in getting me access to the uh, after action reports from Fallujah as well. Who works? Absolutely. Uh, Colonel Michael Shupp, who's now retired, uh, was the regimental commander for First Marines in Fallujah. Um, gen now General Major General Ron Bailey, who's now the First Marine Division uh, commanding general. Uh, I saw him, I think, last year. Uh, Juan Rubio is a young uh, Navy corpsman uh, who worked very, very hard to save many Marines' lives uh, on the river, on the Euphrates River in, uh, in Nazaria. He has become a friend of mine. Uh, Sergeant Donald Walters, who was the true hero of the 507th Maintenance Company in uh, Nazaria, was left behind enemy lines and he, he fought to his last bullet and was then subsequently murdered by the uh, Saddam Fedayeen, uh, was the true hero of the 507th Maintenance Company. And uh, he was killed and virtually had no recognition whatsoever until after my book came out and told really what happened and, and his story. And his parents actually sent me a, a very, very nice card thanking me for telling their son's story. I just hope that I've lived up to uh, my goal of telling the Marine story. Uh, I've tried to make both of these books uh, accurate accounts of the battles uh, but telling the individual marine stories that don't normally get told. Uh, and, and I hope that they will uh, continue to be read uh, for as long as these people are remembered in, from my books, uh, they won't be forgotten.